this is Dave from Psychroptic, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Phantasm. Maximum terror. Ah! That's your target audience, baby! Phantasm. And you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. Phantasm. Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Ah! Ah! Hey, this is Dr. Vincent West, Medical Doctor with the Phantasm Podcast, and I have a privilege of speaking with David Haley today from Psychroptic, and we're going to be talking about their new album, Divine Council, and it comes out August 5th, and sir, how are you doing today? Very well, very well. How are you? I am hanging in there, uh, just doing my thing down here in Florida. How is Australia? Uh, it's 4 a.m. here in Melbourne, and it's a very cold and wet day, um, so I'd probably prefer to switch and be in Florida at the moment. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And, uh, yeah, let's jump into Divine Council. Uh, first off, uh, when did the recording process, like the songwriting uh, specifically, when did the songwriting for this record take place? Firstly, thank you very much for having me. Uh, It's great to be able to chat about the album finally. Yeah, thank Um, you for doing this. Which I guess, yeah, it's been, um, I think the process uh, really started um, towards the end of 2020. Um, We've always been a band that uh, we continue the songwriting process between albums. We never really stop, I guess, you know. Uh, the, the career bad development's always super important. So it's it's it's, um, it's important for us to keep right, keep moving forward. So uh, we put out um, two tracks late 2020, uh, a single, two singles actually. Um, so shortly after that, we, we just kept forging ahead with the album writing so I would say yeah around the end of 2020 which um, as we all know was kind of a the peak of the insanity sure it was the start of the insanity for the last couple of years uh, and we um, I guess we're spread out all over the world um, I live in Melbourne uh, and to the other guy I was at the down Hobart, Tasmania, and then uh, Todd Stern, our bass players in the US. So the actual writing itself was um, a little bit disjointed, um, but I guess it did have its, its pros as well. So um, yeah, I would say it's yeah, probably a, a solid year um, throughout twenty, you know, late twenty twenty, um, and then through to mid twenty twenty one. That was where the, the writing and recording took place because um, to a degree that it, it happened um, at the same time with some um, uh, guitarist he runs a studio as well so we can we can keep writing and recording right the way through the process right. so it's not um, the process kind of merges together uh, which is kind of cool um, rather than you know we write everything and then rehearse it and then go into the studio and record um it's a very, I guess, flexible and dynamic process where we we can still be writing right to the the actual right up until almost the uh, the you know the end of the mixing phase, which is cool. It's cool. Excellent. And then, as far as uh, recording the album, um, did you guys was it a similar process to previous records, or was it a different recording process for uh, Divine Council? throughout um, much of the recording process we were in lockdown here uh, especially me being in Victoria our uh, 
state government got pretty wacky and decided to keep us locked up for a long time. Um, so I didn't actually see the other guys for about 16, 18 months. So wow. my recording was done. Um, yeah, it was, it was wild. It's wild. Uh, so m- my actual recording took place in a studio in Melbourne uh, and I was just getting the files sent over um, so yeah it was very disjointed a little bit isolating um, but on the flip side um, it I think creatively it uh, maybe in the end some of my parts uh, and the overall process, um, yeah, it was different. I, I, I don't think I'd like to do the same process again. Uh, I think I prefer, well, I definitely prefer everyone being somewhat in the same place at the same time. But um, I guess we just have to make do with. There we go. Okay. But yeah, I, it has to be hard uh, for you guys living in different parts of the country, and then everybody's dealing with probably a different phase of the pandemic, I'm sure, especially when you're trying to make a record. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it's something we'd never thought of. It, it didn't even cross our minds that we could ever not be able to travel because it's something we just took for granted and we did it every single week, you know. Um, uh, but, you know, I guess we're pretty re- resilient as humans, so we learn how to adapt pretty quickly. Um, so it, I don't think it really slowed the process down. It just meant we had to work differently. Sure. Um, and, yeah, the, there's pros and cons in any situation. Um, I guess some of, the, some of the pros in this situation, we were actually... Um, working isolated from each other we could probably fine tune um our own parts to a degree where um there's not as much for want of a better phrase um you know not as much um dilution of any ideas because this is your own pure ideas it's it's it, it it's not a um a collective uh, effort in terms of the individual parts. So, um, if you're looking for some positives, that, that could be it. So, our, our parts itself, um, we could get our individual ideas very polished before presenting it to the collective. Um, but, you know, as I said, I, I, I'm not sure whether I'd like to work like that again in future. So, we just made the best of it. Uh, a shitty situation, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. And as far as like production, uh, same situation. Was this different for this album, or? Uh, well, yeah, the, the last few albums, uh, Joe has actually handled. Joe, our guitarist, has handled the majority of the um, engineering and the production and the mixing. Um, so he, he actually mixed this album as well in the part I think the last album we had uh, Will Putney mix it but um, Joe uh, mixed and mastered this album um, which you know I think it, it turned out really turned out really well and it's, it's it's cool having I guess the creative driving force be able to um, uh Realize the full creative vision, you know, from the writing right through to the production. So sure, that, that's definitely a benefit. Yeah. What about uh, the artwork for the new album? What can you tell us about that? Uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to work with Elron Cantor, uh, who over the last few years he's definitely been one of the our personal favorite artists within the, I guess, the heavy metal world. Um, and as with most artists we work with, we like to give them complete uh, creative freedom because I think you get the best results that way. Sure. Um, we give somewhat of a brief, um, very loose brief, but then it's like, here you go, here's the idea. If you want to work with us um, and you like the idea, 
go forth and do what you will. Um, and there was quite a long lead time. Um, I think we, we initially started speaking to Elrond in 2020, so um, it was kind of, here's the brief, um, you've got 12, 18 months maybe to work on it, we're not sure, uh, we'll just keep you posted with the actual album recording, uh, and then we'll actually send you some ideas, like he, he, he did want to hear um, some of the music uh, in the process as well, which uh, was a cool thing, because... Um, um, you know, you, you want everyone working on the album um, in whatever role to um, have the tools needed to do their best work. Uh, and that's something we hadn't been asked for before by an artist was actually um, to get... Um, yeah, we've never had an artist want to uh, hear how the album was developing and, and taking shape. So... Yeah, it was definitely cool. Um, I hope in future we get to work with him again. Um, and that's, I guess that's one of the benefits um, of the album process. We, we're fortunate enough to be able to work with different artists and commission them to do art for us, which, you know, in regular day-to-day life, you, you don't get too many, op- too many opportunities to um, just commission a world-class art, artist to do piece of artwork for you definitely um, my personal advice doesn't allow that so for it to be a, an integral part of the actual uh, album process it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a privilege for sure it's incredible I love the artwork um, and as far as uh, the recording process for you on this album did you use a different uh, drum setup than you had before or is it kind of status quo at this point when you do an album or do you mix it up as far as your kit uh, I mean, in terms of the actual setup, I'm pretty set in my ways. Um, definitely, there's going to be um, differences in, in the actual um, kits that I use, um, just you know, based on various logistics and um, also what I have at the particular time. Because um, you know, I guess it's 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 there's so many moving parts in the actual process so um, we because we did work in Melbourne well actually tra- I tracked the drums in Melbourne for this album um, usually I would track in Tasmania with Joe but we literally I couldn't get into the state um, so I used my kit that's based in Melbourne um, and actually in the warehouse where I've got my re- uh, rehearsal studio there's a recording studio in there so it was pretty convenient in that regards. Um, I was able to basically to record where I rehearse. So um, I had my, if we want to talk about the, the nuts and bolts, so to speak. I had Please. My, uh, yeah, I had my personal uh, Pearl Reference Pure uh, on this this recording. Um, and I literally carried it probably 20 metres which would be, I would say, sixty feet, <laughs> something like that, oh, <laughs> um, God. from my re- from my rehearsal room down to the um, the recording studio um, at the warehouse. So very convenient, and it was within uh, our five kilometer restricted radius that um, our glorious state leader had us under for the time. So I was legally allowed, with my permission slip, to go to the recording studio which is another bonus yeah um so that um yeah literally we were restricted um to that was what I could use on the recording for various reasons um and it, it turned out um it turned out yeah very happy with it uh, under the circumstances I guess um and uh, I guess in terms of um, differences to previous album recording sessions, um, I think the last recording sessions I used uh, a Pearl reference uh, that we actually have in, in Tasmania. So pre- pretty familiar 
this setup uh, and um, uh, equipment, so to speak. Yeah, but yeah, feel free to ask me to expand on anything if you'd like. Oh, it's that's exactly what I wanted to know. It's it like I said, it sounds incredible. Um, not sure if that's what you, oh, you. had. Had you, but. Oh, let me ask you this. So pending the, if the pandemic, let's pretend it never happened, would you have used different drums on this? Would you have used a different kit or? Uh, I would probably just for logistical purposes used um, the kit we have in Tasmania. So it's, um, I'm very lucky to have uh, a Pearl endorsement and I've been working with them for years. Uh, I love the drums. Um, so I, I have um, my personal kit here in Melbourne, which is, I guess, that one doesn't leave the the rehearsal space, I guess. That's, sure. Um, you can say that's my daily driver in terms of drums. Uh, so it, it was cool to be able to use that one because I wouldn't have used it otherwise. Um, and the, yeah, the, the kit we do have down in Tasmania, um, just logistical purposes, um, it makes sense to use that one. Uh, it's an amazing pearl reference kit. Um, so no, no. Given the pandemic, I, I wouldn't have used the Melbourne based kit. Uh, it just turned out to um, be a, a, I guess, a fortunate situation um, in what was not a <laughs> typical situation. Now, for touring, do you use either of those kits, or is it a completely different kit when you're touring? It's actually completely different. Uh, again, you know, the drums are logistically a challenging instrument to cut around so I do have a, uh, a US bass kit that lives with uh, our bass player Todd, Todd Stern um, that one is a, a Pearl Decade Maple kit uh, which is a great kit for on the road sure. uh, it takes a lot of beating, sounds great um, so that lives yeah that lives in the US um for Europe, it's always dependent on um, where the tour starts, um, uh, who the tour is with, and all, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but usually, I would um, hire the same or similar setup um, to what I have here. So, I, I guess my preference would be a Pearl reference kit. Or, or a Pearl Masters kit, something of, of that ilk. Um, but um, any of the, you know, any of the the high end Pearl stuff is amazing and sounds great. So um, yeah, it just it, it it's always dependent on the circumstances. But um, um, usually one of those, you know, either either a Masters or a reference. Um, my preference yeah sure. excellent excellent um as far as touring are you all planning a lot of festival stuff or any kind of tours that you can speak of i know sometimes there's things that aren't quite in stone that you can't talk about is there anything you'd like to talk about as far as upcoming like doing some shows or anything or yeah not so much on the festival front we're doing um a few spot shows in australia but um we, we're working hard on a, a north american tour hopefully that we can announce soon for later uh, in the year um, which yeah we're really looking forward to it's been probably it'll be almost three years by the time um, we get back over there so that's uh, hopefully we can announce more details pretty soon for that one fantastic and I wanted to ask you because we were talking about the drum stuff I, I'm just curious because I've never actually I've been doing my co-host I've been doing Phantasm for several years now. I've never asked this. I wanted to ask you this as a drummer that I think is incredible. You're very masterful at your art. Is it ever frustrating or, or just irritating when you... Not, not, not the privilege of playing a festival, but do you ever have to use like a house kit and you're just like, oh shit, I don't want to do this. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like a one that everybody's using all day? Because I've, I've seen that done here in the States. I'm assuming this is something you've run into. I hope you haven't, but if you've run into it, can you talk about that? Oh, so? sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just part of the, the process. Um, yeah. Most tours, if... It's a, it's a great question. I, I, I guess I'm just flustered even thinking about it. Cause, yes, <laughs> like I, I said, it seems like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
how it is. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Um, there's something you definitely have to get used to just playing in a touring band. You're going to have to use pieces of shit um, all around the world. It's just part of it. Um, and that's not to disparage, you know, uh, festival runners and, um, you know, and other very, very generous people who have lent me equipment over the years. Um, but um, sometimes, really, you're just using something that's awful and the, the whole gig, you just want it to end, so to speak. Um, it happens continually. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of very shitty backline kits that I've had to use. Um, <laughs> but, you know, on, on the flip side, um, not everyone gets to travel and play music, so... Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and um, again, you know, the person in the front row who's paid their money to see the show, they don't give a fuck whether I'm uncomfortable or not, so I, I just got to suck it up and do it. So there's, um, you know, you, you, you try to take um, essentially what, what's called your, your breakables, um, which, you know, your pedals snare symbols and that sort of thing so sure. you've got a small amount of equipment that you're pretty familiar with so you, you can make do you can make do but yeah not, not every time I get to use something to the um, the quality that I've, I'm, I'm used to in my rehearsal room well sure yeah I mean obviously the privilege is there I was just curious what your thoughts were on it I just always I've never got to ask somebody that I thought it was interesting to ask you that as good a drummer as you are I just thought it was because I could just see where it would just be it's like giving a doctor someone else's tools to, to do surgery you know it's just it's like a it would just have to feel yeah, you, you appreciate the privilege it's like ah oh, this is not I'm not used to this like this just feels weird and, you know so exactly yeah exactly exactly so um, a question for you are you actually a, an MD a medical doctor I am not. I took my name from uh, Herbert West from the Reanimator movies. That's where the West part came from, and Vincent from Vincent Price. And this ran with this silly shtick as a host doing podcast stuff promoting death metal since uh, 2016. So, well, that is that that is cool. That's cool. Um, I guess you could you'd almost be at the stage of being a doctorate in. Uh, in podcasts. Like, yeah, that's very good. You, you listen, you get your honorary doctor. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to do this. I'm sorry it's early as hell over there. Um, uh, but I appreciate you taking the time to do this today. The record's masterful, guys. The new Psychroptic comes out August 5th. It's fantastic. Uh, and thank you so much for sharing everything today. And I hope we get to do this again sometime. My pleasure, my pleasure. And I, I, I really hope we get to uh, get to Florida later this year and um, get out of this shitty Melbourne weather. Yeah, man, that sounds that sounds like a plan. Cool. Dude, thank you so much for doing this. It's been an absolute pleasure. I appreciate you taking the time today to do this. It's really cool to talk with you, and that album's masterful. Thank you very much. And, yeah, my pleasure. It was a great chat. Awesome, man. Well, you take care of yourself, and all my best to you. Excellent. Same to you. You take care. Take care. And you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. Phantasm.